Hi, I'm Monica Yoon. I'm a poet and I'm on the board of, well, Poets House, um, which as many of you know, was extensively damaged by a flood. Um, but uh, they asked me to do this video yesterday and I was sitting there thinking about what to read. You know, I, this is the second year in a row that I'm not going home for the holidays. Um, we're, uh, you know, we're reading about devastation all over the world. Um, and we're coming up on the darkest day of the year. And, you know, I was thinking I've been asked to read one poem from the collection here and one poem of my own. I was thinking about what to read from the collection here. And then I got the news that the great Bell Hooks uh, had left us. I had a memory, I think like so many people, uh, upon encountering her work, I immediately ran out and grabbed as much of it as I could and found myself coming back to it as a kind of home. And home was an important concept to her. She, um, she came, as you know, from Kentucky and Kentucky, which has been so ravaged uh, by tornadoes uh, just recently. And she chose to go back there. She chose to return home. And I think of her work as providing a home for so many of us. And I think of that as what writing, what poetry hopefully can do. So when I heard about the flood at Poet's House, of course, my first thought was, oh my God, the books. Um, did it hit the books? And as you can see, thankfully it didn't. Um, to our profound relief, because of course, you know, the books are the heart and the home of Poet's House. Uh, they followed us from place to place. And I was thinking of this book I had read really a long time ago. And so I came here, I was very happy to find it on the shelves. Ah, Bell Hooks right here after Homer and Kathy Park Hong. Uh, this is a woman's morning song. Um, it's published Harlem River Press, 1993. And I wanted to read this poem. Unnamed Our Search. I come slowly through the doors of locked rooms. Behind them, worlds I have made, hands bare crude tools. No sound at all, but the steadying beat of a heart. Cold hammer pounding, the proper way to nail one sharp quick stroke, our father's hand guiding us away from love's touch into a new world. We must discover again and again the way home. Uh, and that is so much of what Hooks uh, brings to us, still brings um, the clear-eyed view of difficulty, the diagnosis of those difficulties, but also the faith that there is a home that we can get back to if we can discover the way. So they asked me to read a poem of my own. Um, this is a poem from my last book. It's called Yggdrasil, those of you who are mythology nerds like me will know that Yggdrasil in Norse mythology was the tree of the universe, the tree that joined the multiple worlds. And what's interesting for me is that Yggdrasil is also a home. It's, um, it's a home. I think there are like four squirrels who live in its branches. There's a dragon curled around its root. There are stags, oddly, who um, also live in it. Um, it's a home for all of these things. Um, and it also um, kind of served as a place where the father of the god Odin went in his last resort. Um, and he hung there from the branches um, as if dead for eight days before getting the gift of language. And um, but more personally, I wrote this for my mother or about my mother, about a time when she was, uh, she was thinking about killing herself. My father had left her um, and she didn't and he came back, but 
uh, but this came from that, Yggdrasil. To see a living thing, a badly damaged thing, and to fail to understand how life still catches hold of it and clings without falling through, like water falling through a bowl, more fisher than bowl. Just as a bowl must be waterproof, a body must be life-proof, we assume, as if a life were bound by laws of gravity, always seeking a downward escape. But then there is this olive tree, if tree is still the word to describe, this improbable arrangement of bark and twig and leaf, this tree ripped in three pieces down to the ground, no longer a column, instead a triple helix of spiraling bark verticals sketching the outline where the tree used to be. No heartwood, very little wood left at all, the exposed surfaces green with moss, dandelions filling the foot-wide gap at its base. And still the tree thrives, taking its place in the formal alley that edges this gravel road, sending out leafy shoots and unripe olives in the prescribed shapes and quantities, lizard haven, beetle home. I was wrong when I told you life starts at the center and radiates out. There is another mode of life, one that draws sustenance from the peripheries. Each slim leaf slots itself into the green air. Each capillary root sutures itself into the soil. Together, these small adhesions can bear the much diminished weight of the whole. I won't lie, it will hurt. It will force you to depend on those contingent things you have always professed to despise but it will suffice, it will keep you alive. As you can see at Poets House, we are rebuilding and here's hoping that 2022 brings a new beginning. Thank you.